Hello everyone, welcome to Biking with Steve. Today we are answering the question, is Zwift worth it for the weekend warrior mountain bike rider? And more specifically, is the Dirt Destroyer workout program worth it? As I do my review, you will watch me attempt to break my personal record on CZ Trail in Scabooth, Oregon. Every once in a while we will switch over to audio from the ride to hear what I'm saying. I'm doing this video because, as I stated before, I'm a weekend warrior, and I use the term warrior loosely. I mainly ride trails on the weekend. I started riding late in life, and I've only been on a mountain bike for about two years. Before I invested in a Wahoo Kicker Core and Zwift, I did a lot of research to figure out if it's worth it for a mountain biker. I found tons of sales pitches, but no real evaluations, and the feedback was from users that were either extremely good or pro riders. So let's start off with what you're watching. This is a rail trail I often ride in the winter or when I feel like a fitness pedal. The trail as a whole goes on just under 20 miles out and back. The further you get in, the more it swings away from a rail trail and gets a little more rough. I am focusing on the Strava segment called CZ Climb, which is 8.85 miles and 1,040 feet of climbing. The further you go, the steeper it gets. Because Dirt Destroyer is fitness based and not skills based, although it does leave room for real world rides, I thought this would be a good test of fitness. My baseline for this ride on my full sus bike, which I am riding in this video, was about an hour 20. I also did this ride on a much lighter XC bike with different gearing in an hour 9.45. My initial goal for this video was to beat one hour on my full sus. So when you hear me talking, I'm referencing trying to beat one hour. Why was that my goal? Well, that's about how long a GoPro battery lasts and I wanted to get it all in one shot. That's not a solid way to measure a fitness goal though. Really, I would be happy beating my previous time on this bike of an hour 20, and would be really happy beating the XC bike of an hour 9, especially considering the XC bike has 2.3 inch tires and this one has 2.8. It's also much heavier and the suspension does not lock out. So let's talk for a bit about Dirt Destroyer and Zwift as it relates to the weekend rider. Four and a half miles, 30 minutes. Four hundred eighty-eight feet climbed. Right now, I think I'm behind pace. I have to hit nine miles in an hour because the worst of the climb is yet to come, and there's no way I'm averaging nine miles an hour up that climb. I'll be lucky if I'm at the two range. Now I have to make up as much time as I can here to let me go slow up there. What are the good things about this setup? The first thing that it provides as a benefit is time in the saddle. Being on any trainer and on a set training schedule means your butt is on the saddle a few hours during the week, not just on weekends. This is really a comfort thing. If your butt is really used to riding and you're comfortable on longer rides, you'll perform better and just generally have more fun. I was not expecting this to be a benefit, but it really is. Comfort is huge when riding. The second is smooth cadence. Dirt Destroyer is really designed for roadies looking to get into mountain biking. I'm an amateur with no experience either way. Dirt Destroyer spends a lot of time focused on power at 65 RPM, as well as smooth power in bursts to maintain traction. The six weeks of building this way of riding into my muscle memory was a huge improvement. I noticed this specifically when riding through a scree field. I was easily able to put my legs on autopilot to get the power down. It's frost on the ground. 6.4, 6.05 miles, about two thirds. Done mile wise. We have 522 feet climbed, 480 ish to go. 
37 minutes. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hey. Slow down to the deer. I still think a behind pace because I know the climb to come and I know what it does to me. Not too far from hitting that climb. While my body did the navigating and moving the bike, I was able to clear things I previously would not have been able to clear. This is definitely a skill I did not previously have. The third is muscle building. Dirt Destroyer dedicates a lot of time into bursts of power to make sure you can do punchy climbs. It works to build leg muscles. This is a pretty self-explanatory benefit and seems obvious since you're riding a mountain bike, but I thought I'd list it anyway. The fourth is that this workout adjusts itself to your FTP. All right, climb is starting. For the serious climb anyway. At 558 feet, 6.64 miles. Of a dip here. Up ahead, I think, if I'm at that spot. And I'll start moving into the granny years to climb. In the mud, uh, something I hadn't factored in. You can either take an FDP test to set a baseline, or it does calculations based on your input to set itself. What this means is that it will adjust how hard the training plan is based on how strong you are. This meant the workout felt really good for me. When I was supposed to be pushing, I was pushing. When I was supposed to have a break, I had a break. This gave the workout a customized feel. Here's the dip, right up here. Then the climb starts in earnest. 42 minutes, 6.88 miles to come behind pace. The other good thing about this is if I went back and did the training after I got stronger, the workout would still be a challenge. The fifth thing, this has you working out about four times a week and is a decent challenge, but it is structured in a way that leaves energy and time for you to get out on your bike and work on handling skills. After all, riding mountain bikes isn't all about power, it's about developing skills. This is a welcome break I made use of. Getting out and riding also helped me see how I was progressing while I was still in training. It was a big motivation factor to stick with the plan. The sixth thing, and another benefit I didn't expect, was that it teaches you how long you can hold your max power. You know if you can go hard for 20 minutes, and you know what it feels like in your legs. You know you can push yourself to get up this next hill for 5 minutes and it won't kill the rest of your ride. Previously I might have gotten off and walked a steep section because I had hours left to go and didn't want to burn out my legs. With a structured workout, I now know how hard I can push myself. Okay, so 10 minutes left to make it about nine miles up, a little over nine. So 1.3 miles, 10 minutes, not gonna hit that. But that's to make my goal of one hour. My personal record on um, this is actually an hour nine. So if I could hit or beat that, I'd be happy. Why I'm saying hit it is because that hour nine time is on a hardtail with different gearing, 2.3 inch tires, and weighs probably five pounds less than this bike. I'm on my full suspension, 2.8 tires. I'm sure my personal record on this base bike is much more. And I feel more confident to push myself up a climb knowing I will have the juice left that I need to keep my ride going. 
The seventh and last thing I liked is that I just rode more. I mean, Dirt Destroyer, Zwift, Sufferfest, whatever you choose as your training program. If you go from riding once or twice on a weekend to riding four to five times a week, your fitness is going to improve. You will drop weight, you will feel better and more energetic. Exercise is good for the body and you will have that benefit no matter what you choose for a plan or device. Dirt Destroyer held me to a regimen which I appreciated. I lost weight and felt better. Basically this is the equivalent of saying exercise is good for you. This is exercise. Let's talk about a few things this is not. It's not a technical training. You are, after all, on a trainer in your house. You still need to get out and ride. There are not weightlifting or core building exercises included with this plan. It's purely an on the bike training program. Also, the text during the ride is a bit off or wonky. I know Zwift is working to update this as they go. I think it's translated from French to English. It's really not a big deal and is more humorous than anything. Some of the encouragement is a bit repetitive. The third thing worth mentioning is that this is for road cyclists first and mountain bikers second. That doesn't make it less useful or good, it's perfectly fine. But you won't go into this having a 100% mountain bike experience. Even though you can steer if you have the required equipment and there are some mountain bike trails on the maps, for the most part you will be seeing roads and road courses while riding. Again, not a huge deal, but if you want to participate in some of the races and group rides, you'll find your gearing on a mountain bike is not up to the task to keep up with road cyclists. Again, not a huge deal. My guess is if you want to race or participate at that level, chances are you already have a road bike you can hook up to this. So let's get to the bottom line here. Is Sturt Destroyer worth it for the Weekend Warrior? Well, I increased my FTP after completing. I feel stronger, I lost weight, I beat many personal records in my regular riding on home trails. I felt faster, more comfortable, and like I had more control. I feel more confident, I get less tired, and I'm able to do longer rides. Plus, I did beat my personal record set on the XC bike and came in at an hour 6.02. This beat the XC bike personal record by about 3 minutes or 4%. And I beat my personal record on this bike, the full suspension, by about 14 minutes or about 17%. I saw these gains after only having the trainer for about a month and a half. I'm looking forward to riding it all winter and coming out next spring having the fitness available so I can really work on skills and hit the black trails I mostly avoid now. If you have the means and are considering getting a trainer and joining Zwift for mountain bike fitness progression, I would recommend biting the bullet and joining some of the training programs Zwift has to offer. It does great things for us weekend warriors. Thanks for riding with me today. I hope you found this helpful and informative. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Have a great rest of your day and get outside.